This is one of those double your power, half your weight solutions. The deep cycle battery on the right and the LifePo 4 battery on the left. This battery easily weighs two times more than this battery does. Weight savings is always good. Howdy everybody, my name is Steve and I'm on a journey to start living for a living. What we're gonna do today is double our battery capacity so that we can boondock longer. This is part of a series where we're gonna start off by installing a lithium iron phosphate battery. Then we're going to do a couple of other things. At the very least, we're going to install a solar panel system, a charge controller, a new converter, probably some DC outlets inside of the camper, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Let's jump right into working on this battery. Up in the front of the travel trailer is where you're gonna find your battery box on most of these kind of models. And if we open it up, you can see I've got an Everstart Deep Cycle Power. So this is a Walmart house brand. And if we pay really close attention to what's on the label, you'll be able to see 750 cranking amps and 109 amp hours. And as a deep cycle battery, you're supposed to be able to cycle it lower than normal. However, most commonly people talk about deep cycle batteries and especially car batteries as only being able to drop them about half of their rated capacity. So in this case, it's a 109 amp hour battery and we're only gonna be able to get somewhere around 50 amp hours out of it, which is not ideal for what we're looking for. 50 amp hours times all of the stuff that we're trying to run is probably only gonna be about half a day. So I need to double the capacity at least and if not, that's a good place to start. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. These things go for about $400 on Amazon, depending on what you get. There will be a link in the description down below where you can take a look at it. It is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So volts times amps equals watt hours. 12.8 times 100 is 1280. You charge it with 14.6, which is pretty standard charging for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Max discharge current is 100 amps. Max charging current is 50 amps. Operation temperature is between 32 and 122 Fahrenheit and discharging is between 14 and 140. There is a high temperature cutoff and a low temperature cutoff on the BMS in here. One of the things I like about this battery is it comes with this little extra hub. Big reason as to why I bought this one instead of any other one. I use Anderson power poles a lot. So this has an Anderson power pole port directly on top of the battery. We'll show you that in a second. But it also has an Anderson power pole port here and it has two USB-A ports, a USB-C port, DC power, and also your typical automotive socket that you're used to seeing. So there's a lot of versatility that you can do with this to add more power output to it. These things are rated individually. Let's take a look. Anderson power pole input port is 10 to 14.6 volts DC, and it only supports the 12 volt battery. So there might be another battery that this hub might work with. I don't know. Input is 11 to 25 volts DC, 4.2 amp max. USB-C outputs 5 volts, 3 amps, 9 volts, 3 amps, 12 volts, 2.5 amps at 30 watts. So you can charge a lot of devices with your USB-C output stuff now. USB-A 1 and 2 is output 5 volts, 3 amps, 9 volts, 2 amps, 12 volts, 1.5 amps, max 18 watts. And the cigarette lighter output 12 volts at 10 amps. And then it has a green light to indicate that it's charging and a blue light to indicate that it is discharging. Let's take a look at how this thing plugs in. From the factory, you get the battery with this recessed panel open here. Pick up this little cover, turn it 180 degrees and put it nicely and neatly away and then your hub slides right into the top. Ta-da! All right, we're gonna do some real quick tests. I fully charged the battery before I started filming. Here is my multimeter. This is the Venlab VM600A, positive and negative. And we're at 13.28 output, which is fantastic. And now it is out with the old and in with the new. Double check all of your safety settings inside of your trailer. Make sure you are fully disconnected from all of the different power sources that your trailer has. And then you can remove your old battery and put in your new battery. Your travel trailer has an onboard converter to convert AC power into DC charging power. This battery should be a drop-in replacement. Make sure that the output from your converter doesn't ridiculously exceed the input to your battery and you should be fine. But if it does, we'll have a video for you soon on how to convert the charger. To stop your AC converter from converting power into DC and charging your battery, disconnect your AC power. For me on DC, quite a few things still run. My fantastic fans still run. My overhead lights still run. My refrigerator still runs and a couple of other systems. So we're gonna turn off our DC power now. Up in the front area of the trailer, you probably have a DC cutoff switch that looks something like this. So I get to turn that and now my DC power is off. And now my DC power is off. Let's get to work. Let's get this undone. When you are undoing your battery terminals, make sure that you don't connect the two battery terminals to each other with your wrench. That would be a bad day. 
And now the new battery is in. Very easy, straightforward replacement. The new battery is slightly bigger than the battery box, but not too big that you can't manage getting it in there and still getting the lid on nice and tight. Let's get that battery cutoff switch turned back on. All right, the light is already on and working and the fan is up and running. Fantastic. And now we go back onto shore power. Be sure to take your old battery down to the recycling center. They'll give you some money back. And now that the battery's in place, we can test out power output. This is currently connected through the cigarette lighter plug in the front, and you can see the blue light on the hub, and we're putting out 13.5 volts. If we reach down and push the button, you can see that the light on the cigarette lighter plug went out, and we are dropping down in voltage provided. So it's got a nice little on-off switch built into it as well. On my trailer, there's a lot of things I can run on DC and only a few things I can run on AC. Off the top of my head, what I think I can run on AC is the refrigerator, which does AC, DC, or propane. So I'm already covered there. The air conditioner, which is gonna be really nice on those hot nights, but not 100% necessary. It's not on today. We've got a nice breeze and I'm sitting in the shade, so I don't need air conditioning. There will be an upcoming video on how we're gonna get the air conditioning to run off of the battery using a big inverter. Not as big as you might think though. Also the microwave runs off of AC power, but the microwave isn't always needed. There are a couple of solutions that you can do to get around using that, like the oven, the grill, or the stovetop. And lastly, what we need to do is install some DC outlets. There'll be a video on that coming up soon as well, because currently I'm running a lot of stuff off of AC power, converting it to DC power again. So we're bringing in AC power into the trailer and then converting it to DC, or we're bringing DC power off of the battery, converting it to AC, and then converting it back to DC in order to charge something that ran on DC power in the first place. That's not a very good use of battery power. There's a lot of wasted energy in that transition. There are links in the description down below where you can find discounts for this battery. If you get it at Amazon, make sure you click the box for the coupon if it's available. That's a pretty hefty savings right there. Check out this video right here next as we start living for a living.